All right, imagine this. You're sailing across the ocean, no land in sight, and you have absolutely no idea where you are. Yeah, that sounds uh, a little bit unnerving. A bit. You would be terrifying. <laughs> and that was the reality for sailors for centuries before accurate sea clocks. It's crazy to think that knowing your longitude at sea was once considered like this impossible problem. I mean, you know, it really was this huge challenge that stumped some of the brightest minds for, for well, a very long time. So today we're diving deep into the story of the guy who cracked the code, John Harrison, the clockmaker who solved the infamous longitude problem and literally changed how we navigate the world. It's a story that really captures the essence of human ingenuity. I mean, talk about perseverance, this guy, going up against all odds. It's uh, it's incredible. Yeah, so let's set the stage. Okay, so it's the 18th century, the age of exploration. Ships are pushing further into uncharted waters than ever before. Sounds exciting, right? Yeah, exploration, adventure, but um, there was a big catch. I'm guessing it wasn't all smooth sailing. Not exactly. See, figuring out your latitude, like where you are north or south, that was relatively easy. You could use the stars for that. But longitude, your position east or west, out on the open sea, that was a completely different beast. That was a huge problem. Right. Because to figure that out, you needed a way to keep super accurate time on a ship that's constantly moving. Exactly. And the methods they had back then, well, let's just say they weren't exactly reliable. Yeah, you're talking about things like dead reckoning. Yeah, that's one. Essentially, they were just estimating their position based on their speed and the direction they were sailing in. It was, well, it was basically guesswork. Yikes. I mean, how could they rely on that? They didn't have much choice, really. But the consequences were, well, they could be catastrophic. Yeah, you're talking about ships running aground, expeditions failing, and sadly, lots of sailors losing their lives. Sadly, yes. A lot of lives lost because of this problem. It's hard to imagine just how dangerous it was for those sailors. Yeah, it was a very perilous time to be at sea. So it's no surprise that finding a solution to this problem was a top priority, I bet. Oh, absolutely. In fact, the British government was so desperate, they passed the Longitude Act in 1714. And what did that do? Well, it basically put up this huge reward, 20,000 pounds, which back then was a king's ransom for anyone who could solve the longitude problem. Wow. Talk about an incentive. I bet that got people's attention. Oh, you bet it did. It drew in some of the best minds of the era, you know, astronomers, mathematicians, you name it, all vying for that prize. So this was a big deal, a real scientific challenge. Oh, absolutely. A major scientific undertaking. But the solution, surprisingly, didn't come from a big name scientist or a university, did it? Nope, not at all. The solution came from a pretty unexpected source. Okay, tell me more. Well, you've got John Harrison, a self-taught clockmaker from a humble background. This guy, he had this incredible fascination with clocks from a very young age, and he was obsessed with detail, like every tiny piece had to be perfect. I mean, some people might call it obsessive. Maybe, but you know, it's that kind of dedication that sometimes leads to breakthroughs. It's like he was born to take on this challenge, but it wasn't just passion, he had a revolutionary idea. So what was his big idea? How did he think he could crack this problem? He realized that if you could build a clock that could keep accurate time at sea, you know, one that wasn't affected by the ship's constant rocking and changes in temperature and humidity, you could use time to calculate longitude. Wait, how does that work? Okay, imagine you have a clock and it's set to the exact time at a fixed point on land, like let's say Greenwich. Now, as you sail east or west, the time difference between your clock and the local time which you could figure out from the sun's position, that difference would let you calculate your longitude. So you're saying that time basically becomes a way to measure distance east or west. Exactly. Time equals distance. It's brilliant, isn't it? Absolutely. But the, hold on. Building a clock that accurate that could withstand the conditions at sea, that must have been incredibly difficult. It was a monumental challenge. And that's where Harrison's true genius comes in. He dedicated his entire life to perfecting this invention. Okay, I'm hooked. Tell me more about what he built. So he created this series of marine chronometers, the H1, and the H2, the H3, each one more refined, more precise than the last, and it all led up to his masterpiece, the H4. So this is a step-by-step -step process, years of refining his designs. Oh, absolutely. Each one of these chronometers was a testament to his, his incredible perseverance. This guy was not giving up. Yeah, this wasn't like a quick fix. What's amazing is that this guy, he wasn't just a skilled craftsman. He was a true innovator, like always pushing the boundaries, experimenting with new materials and techniques, trying to overcome all these challenges. What kind of challenges are we talking about? Oh, you know, temperature variations, friction, the constant rocking motion of the ship. I mean, how do you even begin to account for all that? 
Yeah, that's a lot to deal with. So what did he come up with? Well, he incorporated these bimetallic strips that would adjust for temperature changes, and then he invented this totally revolutionary escapement that reduced friction, just incredible ingenuity. Wow, that's amazing. I bet each of these chronometers took years to perfect. Oh yeah, years. I mean, actually decades. Each one took him years just to design and build and test. And then he even had to invent new tools and techniques along the way just to make the thing. That's dedication right there. So, okay, the big question, did they actually work? Could his chronometers keep accurate time out on the open sea? Oh, they worked. And with astonishing precision, like mind-blowing precision. Give me an example. So take the H4, his masterpiece, right? They tested it on a voyage to Jamaica in 1761. And get this, after 81 days at sea, the thing only lost five seconds. Five seconds? Are you serious? Five seconds. That's it. I mean, it's just incredible. That is incredible. It's hard to wrap my head around that kind of accuracy. And what's even more amazing is that the H4, this thing that solved this age-old problem, it was only about the size of a large pocket watch. So this tiny little device held the key to navigating the world. It did. John Harrison, the clockmaker, changed everything. It's like something straight out of a movie. But the story doesn't end there, does it? There's got to be more to it. Oh, there's definitely more to it. You see, despite this amazing achievement, his journey wasn't over. Now he had to face a whole new challenge. Okay, I'm intrigued. What happened? Gaining recognition from the scientific community. That was the next hurdle. Hold on. Why would he face resistance after proving his invention worked? I don't get it. Well, you've got to understand, the scientific establishment back then, especially the Astronomer Royal, this guy named Neville Maskelyne, they were all about these astronomical methods for determining longitude. What do you mean astronomical methods? Oh, they were using these complex calculations based on observing the moon, and they considered that to be the, you know, the more scientific approach. So it's like old school versus new school, right? This new technology was shaking things up. That's a perfect way to put it. And, you know, there was definitely this sense that Harrison, he was just a self-taught clockmaker, kind of an outsider, right? And he was challenging the elite, the scientific establishment. Yeah, like he came out of nowhere and disrupted everything. I mean, I guess some people didn't like that very much. No, they didn't. And, you know, there are even some historians who believe there might have been a bit of uh, classism involved as well. It's just sad to think that after proving his invention worked, he still had to fight for recognition just because of where he came from. It's true. He had to deal with years of delays. They made him do more tests. And he was just constantly hitting these bureaucratic walls. I can't imagine how frustrating that must have been. Yeah, I could see how that would make someone want to give up. It makes you wonder how many other breakthroughs have been delayed just because they challenged the status quo. You know, that's a really good question. Because new ideas, they often do face resistance, especially if they disrupt the way things have always been done, or, you know, if they threaten people in positions of power. It's happened throughout history. So how did Harrison finally overcome all this? Well, thankfully, there was a happy ending, or I guess you could say a happy-ish ending, but it actually took a royal intervention to make it happen. A royal intervention? Like the king got involved? Okay, this is getting good. Yeah, so King George III, he was a big supporter of science and exploration, and he was fascinated by Harrison's work. He actually personally tested the H5, Harrison's final chronometer. Wow, the king himself testing out the invention. That's pretty cool. It is, and he was totally impressed by how accurate it was. So basically, the king became Harrison's champion. So the king steps in, backs up Harrison, and then what? Well, with the king on his side, Harrison finally got the recognition he deserved. Parliament awarded him a large sum of money in 1773. Okay, so he got recognition, he got paid. Sounds like a happy ending to me. It was a big win for him, for sure. But hold on, remember earlier I said he never actually received the official Longitude Prize? Oh yeah, you did say that. So what happened there? Why didn't he get the prize money? Well, it's complicated, but basically the Board of Longitude, the guys in charge of awarding the prize, they just wouldn't budge. They were still stuck on those astronomical methods, even after Harrison's success. They kept saying his chronometers were too complex, too expensive, and that they couldn't be widely used. So even with the king's support, they still wouldn't give him the prize? Nope, they wouldn't. They just wouldn't budge. It's kind of a frustrating part of the story, to be honest. Yeah, you could say that. But hey, at least he got recognition from the king and parliament and a nice chunk of change. He did. It was a hard-fought battle, but he won in the end. And, you know, his chronometers, they really did revolutionize navigation. They made sea travel so much safer, so much more accurate. It's hard to imagine what the world would be like without his contribution. Absolutely. His impact is still felt today. Okay, so we've covered Harrison's incredible journey, his struggles, and his triumphs. But what does all of this mean for us today? What are the, the longitude problems we're facing now? That's the question, isn't it? What are the big challenges that seem impossible to solve? What are the things that keep us up at night? Yeah, like climate change, renewable energy, finding cures for diseases. 
Those are some pretty big longitude problems, if you ask me. Exactly. Those are the challenges that need that same kind of out-of-the-box thinking, that dedication, that relentless pursuit of a solution, the same qualities that John Harrison embodied. I mean, this guy didn't let anything stop him, right? He was just a clockmaker, but he took on this problem that had stumped the greatest minds of his time. He did, and that's a powerful lesson for all of us, no matter what our background is. Anyone can make a difference if they're passionate enough and if they just refuse to give up. It's not just about those huge global problems either. It's about finding our own personal longitude problems, right? What are the things that we're passionate about? What are the things that keep us going? It's easy to get overwhelmed, you know, thinking about all the problems in the world today. It's like, what can one person really do? I get it. It can feel daunting, for sure. But that's why John Harrison's story is so important. Yeah. It shows us that individual passion, you know, that drive, then it's combined with pure dedication. It can really make waves. It can change the course of history. It can make a real difference. Exactly. Who knows? Maybe the work you're doing right now, it'll impact future generations in ways you can't even imagine. It's inspiring, right? Like, we all have the potential to make a difference. We do. So it's about finding that purpose you know, that challenge, that question that just keeps you going. So what will be your chronometer? What's the thing you're going to pour your heart and soul into? What's that legacy you want to leave behind? That's the question, isn't it? I hope this deep dive is, you know, maybe spark something in you, listener. A sense of possibility, yeah. Yeah, like a renewed belief that we can solve these seemingly impossible problems. The world needs your talents, your passions, your willingness to, you know, push the limits and challenge the way things are done. Because the solutions to today's problems, they might seem out of reach now. They might, but remember, accurately measuring longitude at sea, that seemed impossible too, once upon a time. And then John Harrison came along and changed everything. Exactly. So go out there, find your longitude problem. What that thing that you're going to obsess over? Yeah, dive deep, explore, experiment, and never give up on your vision. You just might change the world. That's it for this deep dive. See you next time.